Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Now I want to warn you, this is going to be a longer video, but I, it's something I've wanted to make for a while because um, I found that being a professional artist, it's, it was it was hard to kind of figure out what to do and where to go and how to start and I just didn't see a blueprint I didn't see anybody else doing it so I kind of had to make it up as I went along so hopefully this video can help you with your journey in becoming a professional artist or artisan or craft person but first I want to let you know this video is sponsored by richmombusiness.com she also has lots of advice on how you can turn your hobby into a career and she has a free three video training course for you it is at free handmade training com link is in the video description and she'll help you from developing a product line to how to sell it where to sell it what to do and all the other ins and outs in running a handmade business so make sure you check that out as well as all of her other um, videos on her YouTube channel too when you're uh, when you're looking to start your own business she is a wealth of information and I am proud to call her a personal friend so when I started off um, in art I mean I've been painting my whole life I always thought I wanted to be an artist when I was a kid but then when I got to you know high school my senior year um, my parents really didn't think art school was a good choice to make a living and I actually now that I'm an adult and I'm a parent I have to agree with them so I went to broadcasting school I had a, I have a communications degree I worked as a radio announcer and um, a copywriter and I did various odd jobs with the radio and television industry but then one day I was um, working a really really early morning shift at a radio station one weekend and I was flipping through the <laughs> through the classified ads I always read the classified ads I was always hustling even back then and I saw an ad that said artists wanted and so um, there was a phone number and it said art studios of Bangor and I thought well I'm gonna call that what the heck so I called and they were looking for someone to teach a uh, preschool art class and so I went in and met with a lady and I started teaching that class and then she had another class that she wanted somebody to teach and she um, had me teach that class too and the way that she would pay me would be that I would get um, a certain amount there is something flying in my studio I would get I've had the bulkhead the doors windows open and stuff it's been so nice out um, so I would get a cut of whatever the students came in and um, I had about four students and they were paying about five dollars a class I'm like yeah I'm not gonna really make much doing this but then I thought what if I filled the class and gave her a cut so I talked to her and I said if I fill a class what would you take for a cut and she said I'll take 10% so you fill a class so I like well if I get 10 people to pay $10 a class and I pay her $10 I'm gonna make $90 and so that's what I did and that worked out really great for me and then um, and I was still working at the radio station and then I saw a um, an ad for an art director at a local nonprofit it was a uh, senior center and I'm like what the heck you know I was commuting for my radio job I did love working in radio but I was working for a country station and I really nothing against country music I personally cannot stand it um, so I applied and and I don't like driving and I it was like 45 minute drive each way and I dislike driving a lot a lot I don't like to drive um, I love the freedom driving gives me but actually driving don't like it um, so I applied for that and I think because the owner of the nonprofit was a businessman and he liked my um, tenacity he hired me and that was a great job and um, I really got to see how to run a program run a budget stuff I was good at and um, and I worked there for a few years while working my independent classes and then the owner of the art studios she had um, some personal issues and she was going to need to either close the business or just walk away from it and I said I'd be happy to take it over I, I was young I still wasn't in the position where I could pay um, you know somebody for a business she just she just handed it to me she's like keep it running give me a place to teach when I want to and um, just keep it going and that's what I did I kept it going and um, she came in and she taught some classes for me I um, actually moved to a larger location where I could run um, art camps during the summer and um, you know because you generally lose a lot of your students in the summer because they're busy with other things so I filled it with art camps uh, for younger kids during the summer and it worked great I taught adults children brought in other instructors um, gave them the same deal that Jeanette had given me because you know then they're totally you know they're if they can you know hustle and fill a class and they can they deserve to be compensated for that I did after-school programs for local schools and it worked out great um, but I want to tell you the only one time not having an art degree hindered me was this I was um, teaching what an art gallery's owner's daughter and um, so the the gallery owner said oh, I'd love to see your stuff and so I showed her my stuff and she was very excited about it and then she said where'd you go to school and I said, well, I have a broadcasting degree. I don't have an art degree. She goes, oh, well, I'm sorry. I can't, I'm not, I can't even look at your work. I can't have it in my, in my gallery. And I said, why is that? And she, and mind you, 
her husband is an art professor, but um, she goes, well, I have to convince my clients to spend thousands of dollars on artwork and they don't trust their judgment. And if I don't say that this person is already in these collections or they went to the school, then I can't persuade them to buy it. So that just, I'm like, why wouldn't they buy it just because they like it? You know, I mean, and, and I wasn't getting $1,000 for my art either. I never have, never, I still don't. I mean, maybe licensing, but not for like just the outright sale. Um, so that really was like, I was kind of like thinking I'm never going to be a success unless I go to art school and get an art degree. And then I realized that's one person saying no against all the people that I've got to say yes. And then I dismissed it and I moved on with my life and and, and it's gone very well. So I ran that business um, and I also um, exhibit my work at like coffee shops and um, little galleries and you know, nothing to feel like galleries that are at theaters and things like that. Um, I sold, sold quite a few things, um, but definitely my classes were my income. And then um, my husband and I decided to have children. We had our first one and I brought him to work with me every day. And I would actually trade babysitting services with one of the children who I taught, one of their parents. So they would babysit my child during the class right there. Cause I mean, I was so paranoid. I don't let my kids out of my sight, <laughs> you know? And, um, and so I was able to keep an eye on my child. She was able to get free classes for her children. And it just worked out just wonderfully. Um, but then when I got pregnant with twins, I realized that I was gonna have to make a change because my studio had no parking. I was up on, the the, uh, second floor of an old downtown building. Um, I was schlepping materials, lugging materials up and down all the time. And it was just like, I can't, I can barely do this with one. I can't do this with three. Cause I, you know, having twins, having three children under the age of two was just going to be a little crazy. Um, then I also had a shop at the schoolhouse antiques mall, which I actually have a shop there now. Um, so I decided I can't do it all. This is going to be really time consuming. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. I don't want to just let it languish and let it, you know, I see that happen so often. So I decided that I'm going to close the businesses and I'm going to embark on this new chapter of my life. And, um, being, having a child, I got into scrapbooking when my son was born. So I was subscribing to the scrapbooking magazines. And at that time, scrapbooking was getting very artsy. Um, a lot of collage, a lot of mixed media. This is back 2002, 2003. And um, I thought, I'm a, I want to write for these magazines. I'm an artist, why not? And so um, I told myself that I would, after my twins were born, I told myself I'm going to submit um, to at least once a month for a year. And if I don't hear any response, then I'll just give it up. But I'm gonna give myself a year. So I started submitting just to the big magazines for about eight months, nothing, not even a no thank you, ma'am. You know, and I was so disheartened. And then I thought, you know what? I need to start submitting to every magazine I can find. And that's what I did. I started just researching and I would send, cause I, cause I would send one layout to one magazine, another layout to another magazine. And I said, you know what? If they can't even give me a no thank you, I am sending out everything to everybody. And that's what I did. And then I started to get some, um, get some reaction. Cause I figured, well, if, <clears throat> if somebody, and cause like they were saying, you know, please wait till we say no thank you before you send it to somebody else. It's like, you never say no thank you. You never get back to anybody. I don't even know if you check this email box. So I was sending everything to everyone and I'm sure there's people out there who said, oh my gosh, don't do that. They say not to do that. You know, I haven't had a problem with it. So then I started getting published and um, <clears throat> then I realized that you really can't make a living <laughs> getting, your mag getting your stuff published from their fees alone. Most, first of all, most magazines paid you nothing, big goose egg, and some would give you like a gift certificate to, you know, an online shop. Um, so you'd end up spending more money than you actually made. And, uh, some might give you like, a, you know, a box of, you know, supplies or something. They usually all gave you a copy of the magazine. Um, sometimes you'd send your, and sometimes you had to send your stuff in cold, like to the Stampington magazines and you get published and you never know. They're supposed to send you a copy, but I oftentimes people would say, Hey, I saw your magazine, your, your artwork in blah, blah, blah. So I'd have to call them up and say, Hey, did you publish one of my pieces? And then, Oh yeah, sorry. Here's a magazine. It's like, really? Come on. You're getting free content here. At least you can do is send me a magazine. So I got a little fed up and I started my blog. Actually, I started submitting stuff to an online gallery and there was a great community and I was really enjoying it, but then they closed one day and all of my stuff was on their servers and gone. So I was just so frustrated, but I started, a, I had started a blog actually a little bit before then. <clears throat> and I realized the power of having your stuff on your own turf. And, um, so because I had a blog and it grew pretty quickly, cause it was all, you know, I think it was all pretty good content. Um, I was able to get, 
um, on design teams, which which is basically you work for glitter, you work for product, uh, which is fine when you're starting out, um, and then you'll finally get to the point where you can actually charge for your services of you know designing with their pro with companies' products and um, and whatnot. So I just basically wanted to show you my path, but then I realized even with that that I needed to I needed to have a more stable um, source of income, and I'm very good at giving myself deadlines or if this then that, you know. So I said okay. My kids are starting school. They're in, you know, I had one child in kindergarten. I had one child in, um, or two children in, you know, half day pre-K. And I said, okay, kids are in half day. I'm going to give myself a year to be able to make a living selling my graphics. At that point, I'm like, I'm digital stamps are just starting. It's like, well, why not? So I started sketching out, started illustrating. I did actually illustrate for some rubber stamp companies and I didn't really enjoy that process. I have to be honest. Um, so I started just illustrating and I opened up my own little shop handmade shop, which is kind of like an Etsy with no fees, but it, I no longer recommend them because their shop is crazy weird now and things, I had to close mine down because there were so many issues and problems that customers were having ordering. So I closed that down. But anyways, that's what I had used. Very similar to an Etsy. Let's just say Etsy just for, you know, ease of you guys understanding what the heck I'm talking about. Um, and so I would email out orders when people bought stuff and it was going really well. And then um, I got invited to join my Graphico, which I'm still at my Graphico. I like that because they handle all of the businessy stuff. I just have to upload stuff occasionally and, you know, do the creative things, which is perfect for me. But um, I said, if I can't make um, as much money as I would make substitute teaching within a year, then I'm going to substitute teach. That way I'd have the same schedule as my kids because it was always my first um, priority when I had children and my husband too. We had this kind of, when we have kids, I'm going to stay home with my kids. Um, if I work, I'm going to work while they're in school. So that's all. And that's what I do now. I work while they're in school and then I usually kind of, or, and I start working before they get up in the morning. I work while they're in school and then I catch up a little bit after they go to bed. Um, you know, so that's always been my, um, my goal and what we all, what we decided before we had children would happen. Uh, so that worked out really well for us. My husband has a, you know, nine to five job, regular job. Well, right. He's a DJ. I don't know if they call that a regular job or not, but it's a, but it's good. We, we enjoy our lives and, and, um, and it's fun. And I just wanted to kind of show you this path because I get to do what I love every day for a living. Not many people can say they get to do that. So, you know, you may think, Lindsay, you're working before the kids get up. You're working while they're at school. You're working after they go to bed. That's insanity, you know? But my working, like, after they go to bed, might be like, you know, we won't be watching TV together, my husband and I, and I might be, you know, responding to a few comments or checking email. It's nothing like, you know you know, really hard work or anything. I get most of that done during the day. But um, I realized how how difficult it is to get there. And that's, I'm talking about a, a span of, um, from when my twins were born, that was 10 years ago. So how long it's taken me, you know, to get to the point where I can make enough money off of the ads on my YouTube videos, my sponsorships and my sales of products and, you know, other like affiliations I have, you know, that I've talked about in these other videos. It's taken a while. So it's not like I started, I decided I was going to do it one day and the next day, boom, income. No, it was a lot of work. And if I didn't have that, um, that incentive that I was going to stay home with my children and give myself that time to build a business, I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, I also, before I started, um, before I went to work for myself, um, at some point, I don't know if I mentioned it, at some point I, I stopped working at the, at the uh, senior center where I was the art director. I went to part-time and then I stopped working completely when my business was providing me with more income than the senior center was. Um, I made sure I had like a year in the bank of living expenses. I didn't just jump off and like hope to heck it worked. You know, I made sure I had money in the bank. I made sure I had a year of uh, expenses in the bank before I had children. I know it's not practical for everybody. I know it's not possible for everybody, but if you're going to start a business, I really recommend you have living expenses for six months to a year because you don't know what's going to happen. Or make sure you can live on your spouse's income because you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, there are months, there were months where I made nothing. There are months where I lost money. You know, you need to make sure you plan for those contingencies, especially when you have not only yourself, but a family to think about. So, you know, keep those things in mind. I don't want to make it seem like it was a really easy road, but I don't want you to think it's impossible either. I just want you to have a realistic expectation of what it's like to um, to work for yourself full-time, to create a business in a creative field, and just kind of share my journey. I know your journey is going to be different, but um, if you see, I mean, like, I worked a long time. I didn't get recognition right off the bat. It was a long uphill climb, and I think that's kind of more the norm than the exception. So I just wanted to let you know that, and I'll let you know that these, that's why I put these videos up. These are marketing videos. I know only a small percentage of you watch these as a to the crafting tutorials, but I think it's really important because it's hard if you don't have 
a guidebook. There's no like class. At, there's no class in art school, unfortunately, um, how to make a real living as a real artist working in the real world. I mean, it's like, I don't know, what do they tell you? Rainbows and unicorns and, you know, puffs of cotton candy? What do they tell you in art school? I don't even know, but it doesn't seem like they prepare these kids for a career in art or art related fields. But that's neither here nor there. I just wanted to help give you a roadmap in case you were wondering how I got to where I am or if you're trying to figure out what your next step would should be. What should be? Uh, maybe an English class is what my next step should be. What do you think? Leave a comment in the video description. Um, so I hope that helped you out. Please let me know what you thought. Please um, give me a thumbs up and share this video with any of your struggling artist friends that could use it. Um, I want to thank Renee Christine at richmombusiness.com for sponsoring this video. And uh, if you definitely want a shorter, um, a shorter learning curve, check out her free handmade training at freehandmadetraining.com. There'll also be a link for that in the video description. And she's a wealth of info and she definitely will give you some shortcuts that, uh, that I learned the long, hard way. I want to thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy crafting.